This is Radio 4. Pharaoh's Daughter by Georgette Hale Dramatised by Kitty Black with Sylvester Latuzel as Deborah Grantham and Nathaniel Parker as Max Ravenscar. Mr. Ravenscar, your ladyship. Max! I've been wanting to see you these five days. Where in the world have you been? At home, in the country. Oh, I hope you found your stepmama in good health. I didn't find her at all. She's hmm? at Tunbridge Wells with my dear sister Arabella. Uh, they're both coming up to time next week. It's time Arabella was thinking of marriage. She never thinks of anything else. She's been head of her ears in love with no fewer than five aspiring gentlemen in as many months. The latest is some nameless whelp in a scarlet coat. Oh, good God, Max, we shall have some dreadful fortune hunter running off with her. Well, at least I shall be rid of her. If you're thinking of marrying her to your precious Adrian, I can tell you now no, Max. that I would... That is what I wanted to see you about. I'm quite distracted. Oh? What's the young fool been doing? He thinks he's in love. <laughs> He'll think it a good many more times before he's done. This is no <laughs> laughing matter. Uh, who's the girl? A hussy. Out of a gaming house. What? He means to marry the creature. Nonsense. One does not marry such creatures. She's niece to that silly Eliza Bellingham, the one who keeps the gaming house in St. James's Square. She was Ned Bellingham's wife, and we all know what Ned Bellingham was. Well, I must profess ignorance. Sir. Well, he's been dead these 15 years. Left her with a pile of debts, just as anyone might have expected. Well, how does she fill her house? <laughs> Discreet cards of invitation? Handsome suppers, any quantity of inferior wine? Yes. <laughs> and the niece is one of the main attractions. I should like to strangle the abominable creature. Sally Repton tells me she's at least five years older than Adrian, and only fancy she presides over the tables in that horrid house. <sighs> Sally says all the worst drakes in town go there, Sir James Filey. A dreadful Lord Ormskirk, who's apparently paying violent court to her. Ormskirk, eh? I thought better of Adrian. Well, you cannot blame him. What experience has he of such people? Besides, according to Sally, she's quite lovely. It would kill me if my son were to be caught by such a female. Hmm. She'll have to be bought off. What figure were you thinking of? Well, I know nothing of such matters. I rely on you. She's a fool if she accepts less than 10,000. Max! Adrian is not precisely a pauper, my dear aunt. There is also the title. Oh. No, but you need not put yourself about, ma'am. He'll not be caught. What do you mean to do? Well, uh, see the charmer for myself. St. James's Square, you well, uh, Yes, but you know how careful these houses have to be on account of the law officers. I dare say they won't admit you if you have no car. Oh, my dear aunt, I shall be welcomed with open arms. Evening, Ravenscar, your servant. My dear crew, do I take it you're a regular guest, huh? At Lady Bell's, certainly. Then may I ask you to stand, my sponsor? With all my heart. I assure you that the play will be fair, the supper's the best in town, and the wine very tolerable. <laughs> ah, good evening, Wantage. This is a friend of mine, Mr. Ravenscar. Ah, indeed so. May I help you off with your coat? Wanted, is it? Are you ever in the ring? A boxer? <laughs> it's a long time ago now, sir. Before I joined the army, that was. Fancy you a spot in that. With that ear of yours, it wasn't difficult. I was thinking you'd peel to advantage yourself, sir. The uh, gaming rooms are upstairs. I'll make you known to Lady Bellingham, and then you must meet the divine Deborah. But, uh, Deb, I assure you... It's no use, Adrian. <laughs> You'll never win her round, my dear fellow. You keep out of this, Ormskirk. Who is the stranger in the black coat? A Puritan come amongst us? There is no Puritan, my dear. That is Maximilian Ravenscar. Max! I didn't expect to see you here. Why not? 
Oh, I don't know. I, that is, I, I didn't think... Do you know Lady Bellingham? I am relying upon crew to present me. Oh. Oh, well, You seem to be most unaccountably put out by my arrival, Agent. Oh, of course not. I'm very glad to see you. I, I want to make you known to Miss Grantham. Deb, this is my cousin, Mr. Ravenscar. I dare say you will have heard of him. You're very welcome, sir. <laughs> you know Lord Ormskirk, I believe. Seven, sir. Seven. Don't be shy, Mr. Ravenscar. We're all mighty anxious to win your money. But I warn you, Miss Grantham's luck is in, isn't it, me darling? <laughs> and the bank's been winning this hour and more. It's commonly the way of EO banks to win. Good evening, Ravenscar. Seven, Friday. Will you join the play, Mr. Ravenscar? With pleasure, Miss Grantham. But should I not pay my respects to Lady Bellingham? That is not necessary. She is presiding at the faro table. Will you not take a turn at EO first? Just as you like. Lucius, come and take my place. I'm tired and want my supper. My dear. My lord, will you take me down? I swear I'm famished. With the greatest pleasure, my dear. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> but indeed, indeed. Madam, you stand between two fires. Allow me to rescue you. May I have the honour of taking you down to supper? Snatching a brand from the burning. Mr. Ravenscar wins all. Will this suit you, Miss Grantham? Pickled salmon and iced champagne? Perfectly, Mr. Ravenscar. You must allow me to tell you that I count myself fortunate in their lordship's misfortunes. <laughs> What brought you here tonight? Curiosity, Miss Grantham. Is it satisfied? Oh, no, not yet, ma'am. Let me give you some of these green peas. They look quite excellent. Yes, we pride ourselves on the quality of our suppers. Why did you play at EO? Is not Pharaoh your game? Curiosity again, Miss Grantham, my besetting sin. <laughs> <laughs> Your luck at the bones or the calves is proverbial. It was out tonight. I think I dropped above 500 guineas. Oh, you don't care a fig for that silly game. I wish you may not break my aunt's faro bank. And if you will inform the stalwart person at your door that I'm free to enter the house, I promise I shall endeavour to do so whenever I come again. You must know that all doors are open to the rich Mr. Raven's car. Particularly such doors as these. Wantage will have his instructions. What a valuable acquisition he must be. I cannot imagine life without Silas. He was my father's sergeant. I've known him from my cradle. Your father was a military man? Yes, at one time. And then? You're curious again, Mr. Ravenscar? Very. He was a gamester. It runs in the blood, you observe. Which would account for your presence here, of course. Oh, I've been familiar with gaming houses from my childhood. The man who can fuzz the cards when I am at the table don't exist. You astonish me, Miss Grantham. It is my business to know these things. You are perfect for your setting, ma'am. For my setting? Mm. <laughs> your cousin is more complimentary. Yes, I dare say he is. My cousin is very young and very impressionable. While you, sir, are neither. But I'm perfectly ready to pay you any number of compliments if that is what you require. Hair like spun gold, your eyes blue as the heavens. Is that what you wish? I don't wish it at all. In that case, I feel that we shall deal extremely together. Do you play piquet? Certainly. Ah, but I mean, do you play well? I'm thought to have a reasonably good understanding. Would you dare to back yourself against me? <laughs> dare? <laughs> I... I will meet you when you choose, Mr. Ravenscar. Then let it be tonight. Let it be at once. <laughs> oh, Deb, you've not finished supper already. Do come and drink a glass of wine with me. You're too late. Miss Grantham has promised to me for the next hour. For the next hour? Oh, come now, Max, that's too bad. You're quizzing me. Nothing of the sort. We're going to play a rubber or two of piquette. Oh, poor Deb. I shall come to your rescue presently. Now, Mr. Ravenscar, shall we adjourn to the card room? Ah, how is the tally, Deb? We won a rubber each, but then my luck turned. Peaked, re-peaked and capotted. I make it that your losses amount to five hundred pounds. Oh, I agree. Lucius, be so good as to fetch the amount. Miss Deb, how mistaken of you, my dear, to play against Ravenscar. <laughs> Someone should have warned you. You, for instance, Filey? Oh, piquette is not my game. But in the field of sport now, that is a different matter. 
What field of sport? Do you still drive a pair of matched greys? Indeed I do, and they will still beat any of the cattle you own. Oh, I'd buy them if you'd sell, Raven Scar. Never, Crew. Max bred those greys, and I'll swear he wouldn't part with them for a fortune. Have they ever been beaten, Max? Never. Uh -huh. Here you are, my darling. Thank you, Lucius. Your winnings, Mr. Ravenscar. Five hundred pounds on the table, Filey. I will engage to drive my greys against any pair you choose over any distance you care to set upon a day to be fixed by yourself. Ah, a bet. Now, what do you say, Filey? Five hundred pounds, Ravenscar. You don't take me seriously. Oh, we multiply the stake, of course. Now I'm with you. Multiply it by what? Ten. Five thousand. I wouldn't accept. We all know your greys. You'd accept if I offered you odds. Dad's life. There's some pretty plunging in the wind. Do you take him, Filey? With the greatest readiness. You're very sure of your greys and your skill. Did you say you would offer me odds? I did. Oh, careful, Max. You don't know what kind of pair he may be setting against your greys. What odds would you offer? Mm, five to one. Oh, <laughs> Max, you're mad. You're drunk. Nonsense. Are you serious? Never more, sir. Then by God, I'll take you. The race to be run a week from today, shall we say from Islington to Hatfield? Agreed? Agreed. We'll record this bet, gentlemen. Lucius! Waiter, fetch up the betting book! You think of everything, don't you, ma'am? Indeed, Mr. Ravenscar. I pride myself that in this house we do. Your coat and hat, sir. Thank you. Oh, my dear Ravenscar, if you're going in my direction, will you bear me company? Willingly. So obliging of you, my dear fellow. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, wasn't it? Good night. Oh. Do you find the night air, uh, <laughs> the morning air, uh, is it not invigorating? Immensely. Link, sir. Hackney, chair. We'll walk. Oh, yes, sir. I recall a time when it was positively dangerous to walk the town at night. One took one's life in one's hands. Have you ever been set upon Raven's car? Once. I take it you did not choose to walk home with me to discuss footpads and highwaymen. Let's have it, my lord. What do you want of me? <laughs> no. uh, I was um, about to suggest that the removal of your impetuous cousin, young Adrian, would be timely. I'm sure you understand me. I do. For myself, my dear fellow, I find your cousin a trifle forward. What's the woman to you, Olmscott? Shall we say that I cherish not altogether unfounded hopes? Accept my best wishes for your success. Thank you, Ravenscar, thank you. Are you aware that, unlike me, your cousin has offered the lady matrimony? I am. That is why I came to see the charmer for myself. Ah, you have the most use, my dear Ravenscar, as always. Enchanting, is she not? There is a... A freshness excessively gratifying to a jaded palate. She will do very well for the role you design for her. Admirably. I um, imagine you thought of offering the divine Deborah money to relinquish her pretensions to the title of Lady Mabel Thorpe. I am involved myself, you see. I hold a mortgage on the house. I have uh, acquired some of the more pressing of Lady Bellingham's debts. Let me set your mind at rest. I I promise you my cousin will never marry Miss Grantham. I feel sure I can rely on you, my dear fellow. They tell me your skill at piquet is remarkable. You must do me the honour of dining at my house one evening to test your reputation. With the greatest pleasure. By the way, did you know that Filey has acquired the prettiest pair of blood chestnuts it has ever been my lot to clap eyes on? I know nothing of Filey's horses, but I do know him for a damnably cow-handed driver. <laughs> if Filey's pair are all you say, you will no doubt be offered very good odds. Good night, my lord. Or, as the sun seems to have risen, may I wish you good day. I didn't know you were here. Oh, good morning, me darling. <laughs> hey, will you look at the fiend's own luck of me left hand now? Upon me soul, I can't lose. <laughs> <clears throat> What's the trouble, me dear? 
<laughs> is it Ormus Kirk again? Or will it be the young suckling Adrian? It isn't either, at least no more than I'm used to. Lucius, what's to become of us? Why? What should become of you at all? My aunt is quite distracted. There are nothing but bills. Ah, throw them in the fire, my dear. You know well that won't answer. We owe money to every tradesman in town, as well as that mortgage on the house. The Faro Bank was broken twice last week. But it's quite impossible to make my aunt deal properly with business affairs. Ah, sure, and the luck with them again soon, me darling. Mr. Raven's car is called, miss, and desires to see you. I have shown him into the yellow saloon. Mr. Raven's car, you must be mistaken. Nothing of the sort, Deb. <laughs> Faith, it's heaven's answer. He's fallen in love. Oh, oh, oh. Don't be a fool, Lucius. <laughs> <laughs> then see what it is he wants. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Miss Grantham. Do you care to drive round the park? Drive around the park? Yes, why not? Well, I am exercising my greys and came here to beg the honour of your company. But I'm not dressed to go out, and you'll not care to keep your horses standing. If you glance out of this window, you will observe that my groom is walking them up and down. You leave me nothing to say, sir. Grant me ten minutes, Grace, and I will gladly drive out with you. Are you comfortable, Miss Grantham? Very. Your carriage is beautifully sprung. Do you drive it in your race? Oh, no. I have an especially built racing caracal for that. Well, shall you win? Yeah, I hope so. Do you mean to hazard your money on my grace? I must certainly do so. But I have never the least luck and shall very likely bring you bad fortune. Your luck was out last night, I'm afraid. Are you in debt, Miss Grantham? What prompts you to ask me such a question, sir? I believe you, or should I say your amiable aunt, are in debt to Lord Ormskirk. I do not immediately perceive why you should interest yourself in the matter, Mr. Ravenscar. I might help you out of your difficulties. I don't understand. Under certain circumstances, Miss Grantham. Indeed? I am prepared to recompense you handsomely, ma'am, for announcing all pretensions to my cousin Adrian's hand and heart. What do you consider a handsome recompense, Mr. Ravenscar? Shall we say £10,000, ma'am? <laughs> really, sir? You trifle with me. You rate your claims high. Certainly. Your cousin is devoted to me. My cousin, Miss Grantham, is a minor. But only for another two months. If you refuse my terms, you will discover your mistake. Nonsense. Do be reasonable, sir. You cannot think me so big a fool as to let such an advantageous marriage slip through my fingers for the sake of a mere ten thousand pounds. Let me make it plain to you, Miss Grantham, that there is nothing I will not do to prevent my cousins marrying a woman of your order. Very fine talking, sir, but in fact, there is nothing you can do. You will see, ma'am. I declare I have a great fancy to become Lady Mablethorpe. Women of your stamp should be whipped at the cart's tail. Why, how fierce you are. I dare say I shall make Adrian a famous wife. A wife out of a gaming house? One of Pharaoh's daughters? I have learned enough to assure me that no greater disaster could befall my cousin than to find himself tied to you. And is £10,000 all you are prepared to offer to save your cousin from this horrid fate? It would be interesting to know what figure you set upon yourself, Miss Grantham. You regard the affair in so serious a light that I feel I should be very green to accept less than twice that amount. If I engage to pay you £20,000, will you release my cousin? My own £20,000 is a temptation. And yet... No, I think I would prefer to marry Adrian. You will regret that decision, Mum. No, I trust not, sir. After all, Adrian is a most amiable young man and I shall enjoy being his wife. I hope that you will be one of our first guests at Mablethorpe. I mean to set up a faro bank of my own in Brook Street. It'll be very select, of course, admission only by cart. If you think to force up the price by these disclosures, ma'am, you're wasting your time. My offer is no longer open to your acceptance. Why, now you talk like a sensible man, sir. You bow to the inevitable. No, I merely refuse to enrich a harpy. Harpy? The word seems to sting you. Not in the least, sir. I find your attitude most amusing. Well, here we are in St. James's Square. Good. 
Can you get down without my assistance? I'm unable to leave the horses. Certainly. Good day to you, Mr. Ravis Carr. A most enjoyable drive. I must thank you for having given me the opportunity to make your better acquaintance. I fancy we have both of us learnt something this morning. Walk on. Now, oh, what's happened to put you into one of your tantrums, Miss? I am not in a tantrum. Not in a tantrum? Oh, no. And me that's known you from your cradle. I know a tantrum when I see a tantrum. Oh, leave me alone. All back already, my love. Oh, dear. What has happened? He is the vilest, rudest, stupidest, horridest man alive. Hmm? But I will serve him out for this. I will make him sorry he ever dared. He shall grovel to me. Oh, I'm in such a rage. But what does he do? He came to rescue his precious cousin from my toils. That was why he invited me to drive out with him to insult me. Oh, dear. I thought it might be that. Deborah Grantham is not a fit bride for Lord Mablethorpe. Oh, I could scream with vexation. Yes, my love. But what did Mr. Raven's car do? He offered me £10,000 if I would relinquish my pretensions. My pretensions? To Adrian's hand and heart. £10,000? Oh. I must say, Deb... I call that very handsome. I said I should be very green to accept less than 20,000. Less than... Oh, oh, where are my smelling salts? He must have thought you had taken leave of your senses. Very likely. Oh, no. So then I said that after all, I preferred to marry Adrian. Mablethorpe? Instead of 20,000 pounds? But you told me positively that you would not have him. Of course I shall not. Oh, we might have been free of all our difficulties. Oh, Aunt, you would not have me accept a bribe. Well, not an ordinary bribe, my dear Deb. Certainly not. But 20,000. Oh, I can't say it. I will make him sorry he ever dared to think I was the kind of creature who would entrap a silly boy into marriage. But you told Ravenscar you would marry him. Yes, that's what I said. But I don't see how he can't help thinking you meant it. Yes, and I told him that I would set up my own faro bank when I was Lady Mabel Thorpe. Deb, you were not... You were not vulgar. Yes, I was. I was as vulgar as I could be. Oh. And I shall be more vulgar presently. But why? To teach him a lesson. But what is the use of teaching people lessons? Well, to punish him. When he hears that Adrian is going to marry me, I dare say he will try to do something quite desperate. Uh, offer you more money? If he offered me a hundred thousand pounds, I would fling it in his face. Oh, dear, it is sacrilege to talk like that. I shall tell Adrian tonight that I agree to marry him. Of course, I shall not do anything of the sort. Deborah, it would be quite shocking to serve the poor boy such a trick. Yes, but I don't think he will really mind, Aunt Lizzie. Oh. I must find Lucius. I want him to come to Vauxhall Gardens tomorrow. Oh, no. The most shocking thing has happened, Max. I know it, Aunt. Adrian came round this morning to give me the news. You told me you would see the woman. I'm sorry, ma'am. Miss Grantham will not be bought off. Oh. Is she dreadful? She is an impudent strump. Oh, I always knew she was hateful. Is she beautiful or is that poor Adrian's folly? No, no, she is extremely handsome. Uh, painted, has he? No, not painted. She has a pleasant way. Her manners are a little free, oh. but not disagreeably so. Her voice is good. Her air and countenance quite distinguished. As far as appearances go, she will do very well. Have you taken leave of your senses? No, I haven't. I said, as far as appearances go, underneath she is a harp. Oh. Heaven help my poor boy. Heaven may or may not help him, Aunt. I most certainly shall. I wish I might see the woman. So you may. If you care to accompany my party to the gardens of Vauxhall tomorrow night, mm. I, I promised my sister, Arabella, I would escort her to the Ridotto. 
Adrian told me he is to take Miss Grantham. Oh, flaunting him in the eyes of the world. Precisely. Or in mine. Oh, oh that's a big one. Hold on to me now. Oh, there you are, Lucius. This is just famous. I declare, I've never seen the gardens looking better. And you're a sight for sore eyes yourself, me darling. <laughs> uh, your servant, Mabel Thorpe. Servant, sir. Uh, may I present you to my friend, Mrs. Patch? Clara, this is Lord Mablethorpe. Mablethorpe? The young spark who's going to marry our Deb? She has done me that honour. Oh, she's lucky I didn't see you first. I'd have done my best to cut her out of your affection. Oh, I'm glad you didn't have to try, ma'am. I can see you're a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Uh, you're a flatterer and no mistake. <laughs> Good God, Lucius, where did you find such a creature? Why, isn't she what you told me you wanted? <laughs> and talking of vulgarity, me darling. But I know. Poor Aunt Lizzie is in despair. Have you seen Raven's car? Uh, no, but we shall have the best view of him, for his card is on that empty box oh, opposite. Oh, sir, you must be the wickedest creature alive! <laughs> isn't that James Filey with that family party? Hmm? He seems to be ogling the youngest. Adrian, do you know who the pretty child is? She must be one of the Laxton girls. My mother says Lady Laxton doesn't care who she marries her daughters to. There are five of them, and only one settled as yet. I hope she doesn't mean to marry that poor child of Filey. Do but see how frightened the little thing looks. I wish I sat in her place. I'd soon send him about his business. Mm. Good heavens, there's my mother coming into Ravenscar's box. I had no notion she was to be here. I suppose she's chaperoning Cousin Arabella. Oh, look, Deb, isn't she a rogue? <laughs> Shouldn't I give a deal to chaperone her myself? And an heiress, too, I'll be bound. Yeah, I expect so. Deb, I want to take you over and make you known to my mother. You had better be prepared to meet your future daughter-in-law, Auntie. Adrian is bringing her towards the box now. God! God! Green and white! Stripes and scarlet ribbons, feathers and powdered hair. You will excuse me if I leave you alone with your visitors. Uh, Mama, I didn't know you meant to come here tonight. I've brought Deb over to see you. Uh, Happy to make your acquaintance. Uh, oh, la, ma'am. Oh, your ladyship, I should say. <laughs> I'm sure you're monstrous good to say so. I declare I'm quite of a tremble to be standing in front of one who's to be my mama-in-law. <laughs> But Adrian would have me come across to speak to you, and I thought to myself, well, I thought, if it must be, let it be at once, for I was always one to rush my fences, as the saying is. <laughs> but there, I'm sure we shall deal extremely after all. Indeed. Oh, yes, ma'am, I made sure you was a dragon, and my knees quite knocked together when Adrian said you was here. But I vow and declare the instant I clapped eyes on you, I knew I should love you as though you were my own mamma. <laughs> you are too kind. And uh, this is my cousin Arabella, Deb. Are you really going to marry Adrian? <laughs> yes, Miss Ravenscar, spare my blood. But are you? Yes, do, child. Of course she is. Won't you wish us happy? Yes, indeed I do. Uh, I wish you very happy. Adrian, you'd better take Annabella to see the dancing. Oh, I should like to put a few questions to Miss Granville. Yes, Mama. La, Mum. Oh, your ladyship, I should say, you've got me all of a Twitter. <laughs> I do like your Deb, Adrian. She has such laughing eyes. <laughs> Now, ma'am, your ladyship, I should say, let me tell you all about my plans for Brook Street. I mean to open a faro bank of my own and give select parties for the really high flyers and attend all the race meetings and never miss a meeting if I can help it. Do you think Adrian would let me establish a stud at Mablethorpe? You've come back, Max. I feel I've been living through a nightmare. How could you say she's not vulgar? Whatever that creature wants must be paid. Whatever she wants shall not be paid. Her manner tonight was certainly assured in order to force up the price. I shan't let her marry Adrian. You may rely on that. At last I've got you to myself, Deb. You're a dear boy, Adrian. And you've been so kind this evening. Your supper was delicious. And the boatload of musicians following us across the river was a ravishing idea. I'd do anything to make you happy, Deb. I'm only afraid that you might find life in the country very dull when we're married. But I love Mablethorpe so. 
I'm dying to show it to you. Parts of it are quite old. Tudor, at least. Will you not drive down with me to see it soon? I thought I heard someone crying. Did you hear anything? Oh, do you think we'd better go away? Certainly not. Someone is in trouble. It seems to be coming from that summer house. I can't go away and leave you in such unhappiness. Oh, no one can help me. I wish I were dead. Oh, dear. Is it as bad as that? Well, won't you tell me what it is? <laughs> Let me fetch the nose. <laughs> Why? You must be Miss Laxton. We saw you earlier, I think, in your box. Yes. I'm Phoebe Laxton. Who are you? I'm Mablethorpe. I'm a little acquainted with your brothers. I wish you'll tell us how we may help you. You cannot help me. No one can. I didn't think anybody would find me here. Are you hiding from Sir James Filey? How did you know? Your box is opposite ours, my dear. I saw him leaning over your chair. I meant to be good, but I hate him so. When he took me to walk about the gardens, I made up my mind to do my duty. I meant to be good. But when he offered for me and... And kissed me. I couldn't bear it, and I ran away. Oh, what shall I do? You shall not marry Filey. That's... Uh... Well, you don't understand. M Mama will make me. No one can make you marry against your will. You have only to be firm. Oh, you do not know my Mama. She will be so dreadfully angry. Even Papa said it is my duty. Sir James is so very rich, and he will make a most generous settlement, and... and... Oh, only I'm so afraid of him. And when he kissed me, I knew I could not do it. I should think not, indeed. But is there no one who'll take your part? There's only my Aunt Honoria. But she lives in Wales and is a great invalid besides. I thought if I could only run away to her, she would hide me or contrive something. Papa is a little afraid of her, I think. And then I remembered I had no money. And it all seemed hopeless, and that was why I cried. Dev, can't we... It, it's horrible to think of such a child being tied to that devil. Do you mean you help me? We must take her away from here. Um, you'll be quite safe with Miss Grantham until we can convey you to your aunt. Oh, will you really? I did not think anybody cared what became of me. How good you are. How very good. You must trust us. I promise you, Filey shall not trouble you again. I feel so safe with you. Now, Adrian, go back to our box and tell Lucius and Mrs. Patch that I have the migraine. Fetch my cloak, and then you shall escort Miss Laxton and me back to St. James's in a hackney. You can call round tomorrow morning to consider what is to be done. I've brought a friend home with me, Silas. You need not tell anyone that I'm in the house. Now, don't tell me you're not up to your tricks again, Miss Deb, for I wouldn't believe you. Never mind that. Tomorrow, Phoebe, I'll see about procuring some clothes for you. Oh, I never thought of that. To be sure, I have nothing in the world but what I stand up in. And I can't travel to Wales in a ball gown. No, my dear, I don't think you can. Good morning, Silas. Is Miss Deb at home? Yes, my lord. I fancy you'll find her in her sitting room. She said she was expecting you. Then I'll go straight up. Oh, there you are, Adrian. Good morning to you both. I was just saying, I fancy I have a better scheme for Miss Laxton than visiting her aunt in Wales. I will do anything you and Lord Mablethorpe think right. If you go back to your aunt, your papa will very likely fetch you back. It would be much better if he did not know where you were. We will write him a letter saying you won't return to your home unless he inserts an advertisement in the Times signifying that he will not ask you to marry Sir James Filey. Oh, he will be dreadfully angry. No, he will be glad to have you restored to him. You will say you have found refuge with friends. But I have no friends. <laughs> Silly puss. You will stay with me until your parents relent. Oh, if only I could. And then, if you won't forgive me, perhaps I could become a governess or an actress and never, never go home again. What do you say to that, Adrian? I say that wouldn't do at all. In that instance, we must find somebody to take care of you. Now, uh, about this letter to your papa. I'll leave you to write it between you. You'll manage very well without my assistance. 
But what are we to do with the girl if her parents don't relent? Well, dear ma'am, I have a little plan of my own for Phoebe's future. Oh, I don't trust you, Deb. I know you have some dreadful scheme in your head when you look like that. What am I going to say to Lady Laxton if she comes here asking for her daughter? Dearest Aunt Lizzie, this must be surely the last house in London where Lady Laxton would think of looking for her daughter. While she is here, by the way, she is to be known as Miss Smith. Yes, but how long is she to remain? Oh, dear, what a tangle we are in. And you are making it all so much worse by enraging Ravenscar and behaving so abominably at Vauxhall that I declare I feel quite ashamed to own you. Let alone flinging that girl into Mablethorpe's company to write this letter. Oh, you may well lose your chances with him as well as the £20,000 you so recklessly refused. I think it would be a charming thing if Adrian were to fall out of love with me and into love with Phoebe. Oh, it might be a charming thing if we had £20,000. If uh, Ravenscar were to make his offer again... Do you think you, you might... Certainly not. Besides, he assured me his offer was no longer open to my acceptance. I think he is going to try to worst me by some other means. Oh, good heavens! He might set about to ruin us. He would be a most dangerous enemy. And so am I. A dangerous enemy. Whatever he does, I shall counter with something worse. My dear Raven Scar, so good of you to think I might tell you so swiftly. I've been looking forward to our encounter all day. James, oh. set those candles near the card table. Very good, Bring my us Lord. another bottle of brandy and see that we're not disturbed. Very good, my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, what stakes do you care to play for? Whatever you choose, my Lord, I shall be satisfied. Shall we say pound points? Certainly. Ah. My deal, I think. I hope that's not an ill omen. Huh? <laughs> Brandy? Thank you. Now, let me see. A point of five. Good. Five? Fourteen kings. Nineteen. A run of three. Good. Twenty-two. Twenty-four. You should not have had that capote. You must be out of practice. Stupid letter to wait. Do not hope for another like it. I don't. No. Such things really happen twice in the evening. Your deal, my lord. Thank you. I make that 1,500 points. Your luck is quite out, I'm afraid. Shall we continue? You are a better player than I am. I'm done up. I can't play if I can't pay. If you choose to call a halt, I'm very willing. But you hold certain assets I would be glad to buy from you. Yes? Well, you have a handful of Lady Bellingham's bills. How much would they be worth? About 1,500. And a mortgage on the house? What's your object, Ravenscar? I've told you. The mortgage is for 5000 It may be worth something over four. Well, I'll give you 5000 for it. You are playing high for your young cousin's salvation, my dear Ravens. Uh, I am acting for Lady Mablethorpe. I have the oddest feeling that you have some other motive in acquiring this hold over Deb Grantham. I have a strong dislike of being worsted in a fight. Do not think me unkind if I say that I hope she worsts you again. It will do you so much good. Still no notice in the Times from the Laxtons, my dear? Not a word. Well, the girl cannot spend the rest of her life here. 
And unless Augusta Laxton has changed since I knew her, which I cannot credit, she will very likely be glad to be rid of at least one of her brood of daughters. My only fear is that she may hire the Bow Street Runners to find Phoebe. Oh, my love, don't say such a thing. Just think of the scandal if the law officers were to come to this house. There's not the least likelihood of that happening. No one knows of any circumstances connecting me with Phoebe. Hmm. A letter for you, Miss Depp. Oh, thank you, Silas. Oh, oh, my love. What is it? <laughs> not from the Laxtons. <laughs> this obliging letter does not come from the Laxtons. It's from Mr. Ravenscar. Mr. Ravenscar begs leave to inform me that he has acquired... Acquired certain bills of exchange drawn by you and a mortgage on this house. But Ormskirk holds them. You know he does. It must be a trick to frighten you. No, it isn't. And I'm not in the least frightened. He has got them from Ormskirk. That much is plain. Oh, but Ormskirk would never give them up. If Ravenscar offered to buy them from him, I dare say he may have been glad oh. to sell them. Oh, I shall go distracted. You must marry Adrian at once. I must get those bills into my hands. Oh, if only you would be a little conciliating. Conciliating? I mean to fight him to the last ditch. Well, what does he say in his letter? <laughs> Why, that he will be happy to restore the bills to me in return for his cousin's freedom. How dare he insult me so? Oh, I will never forgive him. Well... I must say, that is very handsome of him. To be sure, it's not as good as £20,000, but it would be a great relief to be rid of some of our debts. And if I don't agree, he will foreclose on you. Oh, but I cannot possibly pay him. I shall end my days in a debtor's prison. You shall do nothing of the sort. I'll get those bills back and I won't give Adrian up. Oh. Uh, at least, I will really, but Ravenscar shall not know of it until he owns himself beaten. Oh, don't, <laughs> Deb, I beg you. Why did he write to you and not to me? Because I made him so angry he wanted to punish me. But I will teach him a lesson, see if I don't. I must find Lucius. <sighs> Lucius, I want you to help me, and Silas, too. Faith, what devilment will you be up to now, my darling? You will not mind a little risk, will you? My sword's at your service, Deb. It has nothing to do with swords. I just want you to kidnap Raven's car and lock him up in the cellar. Whose cellar? Our cellar. The trunk room would be best. It has a very stout lock and is not at all damp. Uh, you go beyond me, Deb. I want you to kidnap Raven's car on Wednesday evening. Wednesday... Uh, no, be the powers, you can't do that, Deb. His race is to be run on Thursday. Exactly so. You may depend upon it. He will agree to anything rather than lose the race by default. <sighs> Faith, me dear, if he didn't murder you and me too, he'd have the pair of us clapped up in jail. Nonsense. He would be too proud to admit to the world that one of Pharaoh's daughters had got the better of him. <laughs> you may be right. Uh, now, um, how are we to kidnap my fine gentleman? I thought you would be able to arrange it for me. Silas would help, and, uh... We can't uh, walk into his house or snatch him in the open street, my darling. Couldn't you catch him after dark when he is coming away from his club or, or some such thing? You should write to him, appointing a meeting place in some quiet spot, and I'll keep the tryst for you. No, I wouldn't win by such a horrid trick. We must think of something else. Uh, I dare say you're right. Uh, you'd best leave the manner of it to me. And what am I to do about this wicked letter of Raven's cars? Oh, you must play for time. Uh, give me a pen. It would be better if I replied to it for you. What do you mean to say? Uh, how will this answer? Miss Grantham is obliged to Mr. Raven's car for his letter and begs to inform him that she is astonished that any gentleman could address... A defenceless female in such terms. I am not defenceless. Wish now. She is persuaded that Mr. Raven's car cannot mean to put his barbarous threat into execution. Since Lady Bellingham has done nothing to incur his enmity, 
Miss Grantham cannot but believe that a compromise might be reached and begs the favour of a reply to this suggestion at Mr. Ravenscar's earliest convenience. Very well. Mr. Ravenscar presents his compliments to Miss Grantham and desires to inform her that, that no, no compromise. compromise being in any way agreeable to him, he must beg her to make her decision within the next three days. There. I knew he wouldn't agree, Lucius. Mm. Only bring him here on Wednesday night. Never fear that, my dear. But how will you contrive to do it? Leave it to me, Deb. That's part of my business. Welcome to Thinking Out Loud. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks. Now that the gentleman has shown himself so unsporting. If it wasn't you said Miss Deb wanted me to help you, I wouldn't be here. Telling a body to meet Miss Deb in a dark corner of the park like this when she didn't know nothing about it. I wouldn't want to stand by when she hears the way you've been carrying on in her name. Sure, and she would never know anything about it. Ravenscar's not the man to break a confidence. But how's that like now? I think I hear him coming. What? What? Oh! You hadn't ought to have done that. Hitting of him from behind. Don't stand there chattering, you fool. Help me to tie him up. Did you see the right he landed to my jaw? Aye. Fair rattled my bone box, I can tell you. Ah. Take his head, man. I'll take his legs. We'll have him safe hidden in the carriage before he comes round. Oh. Oh. Ah, uh, uh, no, no, be easy. There's no harm will come to you at all, if you're sensible, Mr. Ravenscar. Put him in the chair. Tie his hands and legs. I'm thinking the second round goes to Deb, Mr. Ravenscar. Don't you be worrying your head, however, for it's not for long she means to keep you here. Where am I? In the cellar of Lady Bell's house, sir. Uh, we'll be leaving you now for a while. Why, you... <coughs> You'll be wanting to think over your situation, I dare swear. <coughs> We'd best tell Miss Deb that we have him safe. <coughs> Evening, Aunt Lizzie. Oh, why, kids, nobody told me you were coming home. Where's my sister? Oh, she's about the house somewhere. She surprised for her. In truth, it was a bit of a surprise for me as well. My colonel had to come up to town on business, and I volunteered to act as his duty officer. Mm. Uh, evening, Lucius. It's more than duty brings you to London, I'll be bound. Is there never a skirt in the wind for you as well? <laughs> oh, you aren't the Kit Grantham I've known all these years. Well, I must admit there's a charmer in the offing. Uh, the fact is, I'm in the expectation of being married shortly. Oh, you have no idea of the cost of keeping up an establishment, Kit. And besides, you're far too young to be thinking of marriage. If you could only see her aunt she is the dearest sweetest thing alive oh. besides she is quite an heiress uh, not that i mean to live on her money but it all hinges upon my being found acceptable to her guardian then i wish you joy sure no stuffy guardian could resist you when you turn on your charm <laughs> oh silas did you have any trouble? Oh, not to say trouble, Miss Deb. We've got him safely tied up in the cellar below. What's to be done now? I must see him. I'd best come with you and bring my lantern. We shall take a branch of candles down. The servants might notice if you took the lantern away. Well, you've no call to be scared, Miss Deb. He's tied as neat as a spring chicken. I'm not scared. Come along, man. There was no need to tie that horrid thing around his mouth. No one would hear if he shouted for help. Untie it immediately, Silas. 
I'm afraid they handled you roughly, sir. Silas, fetch a glass of wine for Mr. Ravenscar. Miss Deb, you're too kind, ma'am. You did me the honour once of telling me that I should be whipped at the cart's tail. And do you expect me to beg your pardon? You will be disappointed, strumpet. You're not above taking advantage of me. You know very well I can't hit you when you have your hands tied behind your back. You amaze me, ma'am. I had not supposed you to be restricted by any consideration of fairness. You have no right to say so. Uh, indeed? You got me here by a trick I was fool enough to think even you would not stoop to. It's not true. I used no trick. Then what do you call it? What of those heart-rending letters you wrote to me? I didn't. I would scorn to do such a thing. Very fine talking, but I have your last billet in my pocket at this moment. I cannot conceive what you mean. I only sent you one letter in my life, and that I did not write myself. What? Do you stand there telling me you did not write and beg me to meet you in the park this evening? Show me that letter. Thanks to your stratagems, ma'am, I am unable to oblige you. You may feel for it yourself in the inner pocket of my coat. Oh, my God. Lucius. How dared he do such a thing? Oh, I could kill him for this. You thought I would write such craven stuff? You are the most hateful, odious man I ever met in my life. And if you think I would stoop to such shabby tricks, you are a oh, fool. I a bottle of the good burgundy, Miss Deb. You'll feel more the thing when you have drunk a little of it, Mr. Ravenscar. I should feel still more the thing if I had a free hand. Don't you be a letting of him loose, Miss Deb. We'll keep them bunches of fives of his fast behind his back, if you please. Here you are, sir. I'll hold the glass for you. Oh. Well, what now, ma'am? I shall have to get back to the front door, miss. I don't need you, Silas. You may go up and leave me to tell Mr. Ravenscar what I mean to do. Yes, Miss Deb? Well, ma'am? I have brought you here to get back my aunt's mortgage and those dreadful bills. You don't think I carry such things on my person? No, but you can write a letter to your servants directing them to place the bills in a messenger's hands. My good girl, bring on your thumbscrew and your rack. You will get nothing from me. No one will hurt you in this house. Only you will not leave it until those bills are in my hands. Evidently, my stay in your cellar is to be a prolonged one. I hardly think so. Have you forgotten that you are driving in a most important race tomorrow? You doxy! Calling me hard names will not help you, Mr. Ravenscar. Nothing could prevail upon me to yield one inch to such a Jezebel as you are. Only fancy how odious Sir James would be if you failed to keep your appointment tomorrow. You are a great deal too stiff-necked to admit that you were done up by a female. How well you think you know me. You thought I could be bought off, didn't you? I wouldn't touch a penny of your money. If that is so, why am I here? The mortgage and those bills are, are different. So it seems. Besides, they are not mine, but my aunt's. Then why worry about them? You have a pretty low opinion of me. Not only am I the kind of abominable wretch who would entrap a, a young... Oh, so you are not the kind of abominable wretch who would entrap a boy into marriage. Then why in God's name... Oh, are... there's no talking to you. I'll leave you to reflect on your position. You must let me introduce you to all our regulars, Kit. Uh, sir James, this is my nephew, Kit. Deborah's brother. Servant, sir. Servant. You've not seen Ravenscar, have you, Lady Bell? No, indeed. I hear he was pledged to dine with Crewe and some others tonight. They waited for him until past eight. No, no, he's not here. I trust he has not forgotten our meeting tomorrow. You may rest at ease on that score, Sir James. My cousin has never yet failed to keep a sporting engagement. Perhaps he has heard reports of my new team. Perhaps. But you will still be driving them, will you not? Oh, there you are, Adrian. I wish you will fetch my fan from the other room. I've laid it down somewhere. What is yes, all this about Raven's car? Merely that he seems to have disappeared. My information is that he left his house at dusk this evening and has not been heard of since. I fear any hope you may cherish of winning by Mr. Ravenscar's default, Sir James, will have but a short life. Come out onto the landing for a moment, Deb. I want a word with you. Oh, forgive them, Sir James. I prefer to forget. Has all this business about Ravenscar anything to do with you? Well, I didn't mean to tell you, Kit, but uh, it's just such a joke as you will appreciate. I've had him kidnapped and locked up in the cellar here until he chooses to give up Aunt Lizzie's bills and the mortgage on this house. That's nothing for you to worry your head over. Do you realise what you've done? 
I'm in love with Arabella Ravenscar. I mean to marry her. Oh, Kit, I'm so sorry, but you could never have had the slightest hope. Thanks to your crazy conduct. Upon my soul, I believe you're mad. Where's the key to the cellar? In my pocket, where it will stay. Are you going to give me that key? I am not. Then I'll take it. (laughs) Thank you. I'm sorry if I hurt you, but it's your own fault. Sir? Sir? Mr. Ravenscar? Who the devil are you? I'm Kit Granson, Deborah's brother. I was never more shocked in my life. A brother? Oh, yes. Have you come to try to persuade me in your sister's stead? No, no, I never knew. I would never have permitted it. I've come to set you free. Nothing was ever so disgraceful, but but you will forgive, Deb, I know. Did she tell you that I have insulted her in almost every conceivable way? Oh, but I know how she talks when she is angry. Well, I did insult her. I don't rightly understand. But you cannot remain here. I will have you free in a trice. Keep your distance, you puppy. If you'd come to knock my teeth down my throat, I could better understand it. Well, I have the honour of being acquainted with your sister, Miss Ravenscar. I see. And you had hoped to ask my permission to pay your addresses to her. Is that it? Yes. Yes, that was it, sir. Well, there is not the smallest likelihood of my giving you permission to address my sister. And if you dare call at my house, I'll have you kicked down the stairs. You cannot mean to visit your anger upon me and Arabella in... in If you had a spark of pride or courage, you'd be calling me out, not offering to set me free. Your sister's worth ten of you, and she is a jade. But... but shan't I untie you? How came you by the key? I took it from Deb. Then take it back to her, with my compliments. Yes, sir. And don't forget to lock the door. Uh, here, take this, with Mr. Ravenscar's compliments. What do you mean? I think he is mad. He means to fight it out with me. And so he shall. Well, Miss Grantham, what now? Why did you refuse to let my brother release you? Because I would not be beholden to him. He's not an ounce of spirit. Have you thought better of your rash words, sir? If you mean do I intend to give you back those bills, no. Sir James Filey is upstairs now, letting fall the most odious hints. Let him hint. If you do not race tomorrow, what excuse can you make that will not make you appear ridiculous? No idea. Have you any suggestions? I will allow you half an hour to make up your mind once and for all. If you mean to leave me alone, do me the favour of leaving a candle. Why do you want a candle? To frighten the rats. Good God! Are there rats? Dozens of them. Well, how horrible. I, I will leave you the candle... But do not think by that I shall relent. (laughs) Well, me darling, and uh, how is your prisoner faring? How dared you trick him in my name? I told you I would not have it. Ah, now, Deb, don't be so squeamish. How was I to kidnap him at all without he walked into a trap? Well, I've given him half an hour to come to his senses. Uh Have you seen Adrian? Well, not for this past hour. Maybe he's slipped away home. I think I can guess where he has gone. You see, my poor brother Quentin is always backing the wrong horses. Uh They fall down or cross their legs or something. That's why my mama says it's so important for me to marry money. Yes, but it all depends on whose money. Why never worry about such things while I'm with you. Well, do you have your answer ready? Yes, indeed. I'll have that key. How did you get your hands free? Who let you go? You did, my girl, when you left me a candle. See? Oh, how... You've burnt yourself dreadfully. Very true, but I shall keep my appointment tomorrow and you shall not get your bills. You must be suffering agonies. I would never have left the candle if I'd guessed what you meant to do. I don't suppose you would. We will now go upstairs and set Sir James Filey's mind at rest, unless you prefer to remain in here with the rats. For heaven's sake, don't lock me up in here. Besides, you cannot go in the saloons with your ruffles singed like that. You must come upstairs with me. I will put some ointment on your hands and find you a pair of Kit's ruffles in place of these. 
In here, please. Now, let me have a look at your hands. Oh, dear, what a fool you are to have done such a thing. You'll never be able to drive tomorrow. I wouldn't bet on it. Do you really mean to anoint my hurts? Of course I do. And there. Yeah, I dare say it may sting a little, but you don't suppose I'm going to have it said that you lost your race through my fault, do you? I was under the impression that that was precisely what you meant to do. Well, you were wrong. I never thought you would be so stupidly obstinate. Is that any easier? Much easier, thank you. Now, if you'll give me your coat, I will sew these ruffles in place. And the bandages will not be so noticeable. I've left your fingers free. Thank you. That will do excellently. If you take my advice, you will go home and go straight to bed. I am not going to take your advice. I am going to play Pharaoh. I don't want you in my house. It is not your house. I am sure your aunt desires nothing more than to see me at her Pharaoh table. In that case, we will go down the back stairs so that no one shall know you have been up here. You think of everything, Miss Grantham. How came you to know that Ormskirk held the mortgage and those bills? He told me so himself. Of all the... Well... I have always disliked him excessively, but I did not dream he would behave as shabbily as that. You've always disliked him? Yes. But believe me, Mr. Ravenscar, not nearly so much as I dislike you. Yes, and then the carriage ran over his footman. <laughs> <laughs> By the Lord, Harry. Ravenscar. Where? What? Max! What kept you from our dinner engagement? I'm sorry, crew. I was unavoidably detained. Good God, <coughs> Max, what have you done to your hands? Nothing much. I met with a slight accident. I hope it will not impair your skill with the ribbons. I hope not, indeed. You're so devilish confident, Ravenscar. You deserve to have a fall one of these days. <laughs> but what's the matter with Filey? And he's become devilish bad-tempered all at once. Haven't you heard? He was to marry one of the Laxton girls, but I had it from her brother Arnold that the fillies bolted. The Laxtons are trying to hush it up. Bolted? Vanished, my dear fellow. Can't be found. No wonder our friends saw. Well, I don't blame her. I mean, filey in a chit out of the schoolroom. Damn it, it's little better than a rape. I wish I were going with you, Max. I mean to drive out to see the finish, but it's not the same thing. Well, you may come with me if you like. Only if you do, you must carry the yard of tin and blow it fiercely at the toll gates. Uh, Max, you'll take me in place of Welling. Oh, by Jupiter, that's beyond anything great. You'd better be off to get a good night's sleep now. And not a word to your mother. I wouldn't be so green. Now, what sort of game do you think our Deb has been playing, man? Oh, I'm sure I can't make her out at all. She seems bent on throwing Adrian into the arms of the Laxton child mm. and declares she detests Ravenscar. <sighs> Raven's car's a bird that lays golden eggs, ma'am, and it would be a pity, so it would, to let it slip through our fingers before we have one of those same eggs. Oh, I see. No need for you to talk in that vulgar way, Lucius. <laughs> but uh, in the main, I agree with you. I'm thinking I'll be taking a hand in the game myself. Oh. But I do not see what you can do. As soon as he knows that Adrian is safely tied to Phoebe, there will be no longer the least reason why he should give us any money at all. Well, Lord Mablethorpe is not the only weapon to our hands, after all. Mm hmm? I'll be bidding you a very good night, ma'am. Oh, Lucius. <laughs> When do you think we shall have news of the race? Well, I doubt if we shall hear much before nine o'clock. They are sure to dine at Hatfield, and then they will have to settle wages and, and give an account of the race when they return to London. Oh, you don't think they could have met with an accident, do you? My brothers are always oversetting their coracles, and my mamma has forbidden me to drive in one. You forget, Raven's car is driving. Yes, but Adrian... I mean, Lord Mablethorpe wrote to say he was travelling as his groom, and... Oh, Lord Mablethorpe! We won... Oh, I knew you would. I'm so glad. Oh, there never was such a race. It was beyond anything great. I don't know when I enjoyed anything so much. Oh, Deb, do you mind me in all my dirt? <laughs> I knew you'd want to hear about it as soon as possible. Yes. May, may I come in? Of course you may. Have you dined or would you like some supper? Uh, oh, no, thank you. We dined early in Hatfield. <laughs> it was touch and go once or twice. 
Filey led for the first part of the way, but there was never anyone like Max. You know where the road divides? At the Hadley Highstone, the Hollyhead Road going off to the left. I can tell you, it's as tricky a place as you may wish for, and any number of coaches and wagons on the road. Well, before I knew what he would be about, Max had dropped his hands and let the greys shoot. It was our only chance. But there was a gig coming from the Hollyhead Road, and I give you my word, we cleared an accommodation coach with no more than a couple of inches to spare. I shut my eyes and said my prayers. Oh, you might have been killed. Well, so I might, with any other man, but not with Max. But what about Sir James's pair? Didn't he boast that they were bound to win? Oh, as to that, it was all in the handling. They are as beautifully matched to set up as you could wish, but the instant Max laid eyes on them, he said that they were pulled up too tight, and so they were. I could see Filey's groom thought so too, but that's Filey all over. He never takes advice. Well, we were off to a good start, and Filey went ahead, driving his cattle up Highgate Hill as though it had been the last lap of the race instead of the first. We had a splendid run across Finchley Common. Going good, very little traffic. Now, I would have passed Filey then, but Max said no. He would pass him in Barnet. In Barnet, of all places. <laughs> it was as crowded as it always is. Carts and chaises on one side of the road, and the mail pulling out from the Red Lion on the other. Not enough room to let a cat squeeze through. Now, at least, that's what Filey must have thought. But Max saw his chance, and we went through at a spanking trot. Oh, Max has the lightest hands. He says the only thing is Filey may have ruined his pair's mouths. But he told Filey to name his price and bought them at the end of the day. And Max says... Well, he... I'm glad you won. I must go down and speak to Silas for a minute. Do you tell the rest of the tale to Phoebe? I'll come back presently. Oh, I'm afraid I've been very tedious. The thing is, I, I found it so exciting. Oh... But you could hardly be interested in such sporting events. Oh, I think it's the most exciting thing I ever heard. Please, please tell me the rest. Oh, Phoebe, you're so very sweet. I do love you so dearly. Oh, Adrian! Oh. No, we must not. Deborah! Oh, I must have been mad. I thought I loved her and wanted to marry her, but I, I don't. I love you, Phoebe. What are we to do? You will marry her, and I shall g g go into a nunnery or something. You'll soon forget me. Oh, I cannot marry Deb. We must tell her the truth. No. No, I implore you. How could I possibly steal you from her? I would rather die. But you didn't steal me. We didn't mean to fall in love. She must be told the truth, and at once. Oh, what will she think of me? What will she think of me? Have you come to the end of all your hairbreadth escapes, or uh, am I too soon? We haven't been talking about the race. There's something I must say to you. No. I didn't mean to do it. It was something I couldn't help. I see how it is. I am betrayed. You have trifled with me, and now you cast me off for another. Phoebe is blameless. Oh, was ever any defenceless female so deceived? Oh, no, do not say so. He will cast you aside as he has cast me. Oh, to think I should have given my poor heart to a rake. Oh, Deb, I'm not. I, indeed, I'm not. And you never said you loved me. It's not as though... My whole life is blighted. I shall very likely go into a decline. Upon my word, Deb, if you don't stop this instant, I'll, I'll shake you. You foolish boy. Why in the world do you think I threw the two of you together if not for this? I never had the least intention of marrying you. <sighs> it's just like you to roast me. Somehow I, I couldn't help thinking that you didn't care for me. I wish you both very happy and I'm sure you were made for one another. Now, we have to consider what is to be done. Your parents can have no objection, I imagine, to your marriage with Adrian. I'm not as rich as Filey. I haven't got half his wealth. You aren't precisely a pauper. I call it a very good match, and so, I am persuaded, will Lord Laxton. But Mamma will not care a fig for anything but the money. I, I shall call on Lord Laxton and offer for Phoebe with all the propriety in the world. <laughs> but if he refuses his permission... I shall marry her out of hand, even if it means running away with her to Gretna Green. Bravo! Meanwhile, am I to keep her here with me, or do we send her to stay with her aunt? Oh, I'd forgotten her aunt. Oh, Deb, I believe I should journey into Wales to see her and to beg for her support. What do you think? It seems an excellent plan. She may well be able to assist you. Oh, you're the best of creatures, Deb. I don't know where we should be without you. Deb, I'm having such a wretched morning. Nothing but bills. 
just look at the amount the milliner says I owe her. Yes, Silas, what is it? A letter for Miss Deb, ma'am. Messenger brought it round by hand. Mm. Is he waiting for an answer? Uh, no, miss. He went away at once. Mm. Thank you, Silas. That will be all. Miss Deb. What is it, my love? Who is it from? Mr Raven's car. Oh, tell me the worst. He's going to have us arrested. No. He has sent me the mortgage and your bills. Oh. They are all here. It puts me in the most odious position. I can never lift my head again. He must be paid back every penny. Oh, Deb, you are mad. It was bad enough when you wantonly threw away £20,000. But when it comes to refusing to accept this dreadful mortgage, when you have spent a week trying to get it from Ravenscar, it goes beyond all bounds. But that was different. I never thought he would give them to me merely for the asking. But you were trying to take them from him by force. And so I would have. But to be beholden to him in this manner is intolerable. Deborah! Lady Bell! Oh, Phoebe! Oh, good God, child, what is the matter it's with so you? James, yes. oh. oh, heavens, if it's not one thing, it's another. Untie her laces. Oh, where are the salts? Give her some hartshorn. Burn some feathers. My dear ma'am, have the goodness to bring me a little water and she will soon come around. <sighs> Poor child, what can have happened? There, my dear. Oh. You're better now, are you not? Oh, don't let him come in. No one shall come in. Now, drink this, and then you will be better. Oh, for heaven's sake, child, don't start crying. James Filey, he saw me. I was at the window watching for Adrian, and I drew the curtain aside, and there was Sir James looking up at me. Do you think he recognised you? Oh, I'm sure of it. He stood there for a moment, and then he went away. He will have gone to my father. Oh, what shall I do? I, I dare not stay here another minute. Papa will come and fetch me and Mama too, very likely. It is. <laughs> I will say this for you, Deb. You may lock people up in cellars and fling thousands of pounds in their faces, but you don't cry. Ah, Mablethorpe, come in this instant and do something. Good God, what is the matter? Oh, Adrian! What a fool her mother must be not to have told her that nothing can be more fatal than to weep all down a man's waistcoat. They can't bear it. Oh, I do beg your pardon for being such a goose. Now that you are here, I know I shall be safe. What's the cause of your distress? Sir James Filey saw Phoebe at the window and she's convinced he will go straight to her papa and say where she is to be found. That settles it. I know just what must be done. Oh, I knew you would. Well, it's to be hoped you're right. Don't leave me. I'm never going to leave you again, my sweet. Well, you can't come and stay here. There's no room. I don't mean to stay here, ma'am. I'm going to take Phoebe to her aunt in Wales. Deb, I shall need you too. What do you mean to do, you absurd creature? I mean to marry Phoebe out of hand, if her aunt will permit. And if the aunt does not permit, I suppose you will abide by her decision? No, I shan't. Hmm? But I hope she may give her countenance to the wedding. I shall have a special license with me. Capital. I never thought you had so much sense, Adrian. You will be able to put a notice in the Times saying that Phoebe was married from her aunt's house. <laughs> Where does she live, my dear? Wellspool, Mum. Oh. In Montgomery. And I'm sure my aunt will be more than willing to approve of my marriage to Adrian. I shall inform my mother that I'm going into the country for a few days shooting with some friends. I will hire a chaise. Deb, you'll come with us, will you not? I shall ride beside you, of course. So I am to play propriety, you mean? And what is to become of me at the journey's end? I shall bring you safely back to town. I've thought it all out. Once the knot is tied... I shall leave Phoebe in her aunt's care and return to London to inform her parents and my own mother of the event. I see you have it all planned. I, I must scribble a note to, to someone, uh, telling them that I shall be out of town for a few days, and then we'll make ready to set out. And if Augusta Laxton or half a dozen like her want to know where you have gone, I give you my word I shall be perfectly able to fob them off. Good evening, Ormskirk. I thought you visited Brooks as seldom as I visit White's. And I see here, Raymond's car, let me tell you, I cannot congratulate you on the use you made of certain bills which I sold you. May I know how you are aware of what use I made of this? Inference. Just inference. I'm far from understanding what you mean. We are, of course, discussing your cousin's wife. 
Or should I say he's enchantress? My cousin is not married, nor is likely to be. He's staying with friends in the country. And my dear Ravenscar, I'm afraid you've been duped. In what way? Samson was here earlier this evening. He'd been staying in Hartford and changed horses at the Green Man at Barnet. He had an excellent view of a post-chaise and four heading north. North, you understand? Go on. He assured me he recognized Deb Grantham with a young woman beside her, presumably her maid, and there was a quantity of baggage strapped on behind the chaise. Very possibly. Miss Grantham has gone into the country for a few days. She sent me a note to that effect. Mm. And uh, were you aware that your cousin had the intention of accompanying her? Do you tell me that Mablethorpe was with Miss Grantham? Apparently he was riding beside the chaise. I did mention that they were travelling north, did I not? Do you infer that my cousin was eloping to Gretna Green with Miss Grantham? It seems a fair inference. It's a damned lie. You should know better than I, my dear sir. Miss Grantham has no more intention of marrying my cousin than she has of becoming your mistress. I only hope you may be proved right. For myself, I fear I am a cynic and tend to think the worst of people always. God, you've come home, Max. What is it? Arabella? Oh, my dear. I ought to have suspected when your sister said she had the headache that she was planning some mischief. Out, is she? Her bed has not been slept in. And I can get nothing out of that wicked maid of hers. Where do you think she's gone? I have no idea. And nothing would induce me to scour London in search of her. She will return presently. And in the meantime, you'd much better go to bed. Oh. I will wait up for her. Oh, Max. Do you really think she will come home? I'm quite positive. Now, off with you to bed. Here you are, me child. <laughs> Safe and sound, not a mouse stirring. Oh, it was such an adventure. <laughs> my maid will be waiting. <laughs> no, you must go before she opens the door. Oh. Oh, walk on. I didn't expect to see you at this hour. What a start you gave me. Who is your cavalier? He is gone. Just as well. Where have you been? Only to the masquerade at Ranala. I did so much want to go. Mama would not take me. So, so what was I to do? Stay at home. Oh, don't be cross with me, dearest Max. It was such an adventure, and I did not once take off my mask, so no one could recognize me. You know, Belle... You will have a considerable fortune when you come of age. I know. I shall enjoy that. Well, certainly, but take care you are not taken in by a man who wants to enjoy it with you. Oh, that's horrid, Max. It is, unfortunately, the way of a great part of the world. Do you mean... Do you mean that all men who have wanted to marry me have only wanted my fortune? I'm afraid I do, Belle. Oh, it's a very lowering thought. But it would be if there were not plenty of men to whom your fortune will not matter a jot. But how shall I know them? Well... Can I give you one word of advice? If you meet any man who wants to elope with you, you may depend upon it that he is after your money and nothing else. Before you lose your absurd heart to any of them, consider whether you'd care to present him to me or to Adrian. And if I would not, will he be the wrong sort of man? He will. Well, I'll do that. <laughs> it will be a very good kind of game. Who took you to the masquerade tonight? In view of what you've just said, I don't think I'll tell you. But I think someone is trying to impose upon me, though I'm not quite sure yet. It is the most enchanting sport. Go up to bed, you baggage. I wish to God I'd not been saddled with the care of you. Now, remember what I said. To the very last letter, my dear, kind, respectable brother. <laughs> What luck to run into you like this. So, you're back at last. Yes, this instant. 
I've just set Deb down in St. James's Square and I'm on my way back to Brook Street to see my mother. Oh, Max, I'm the happiest man alive. I've so much to tell you. I thought you were shooting with Tom Waring. I know, but it was not so. Max, I'm married. Married? I knew I should surprise you. I'll come round and tell you all about it later. It's wonderful, it is, the way you do keep coming to the house, sir. As though there hadn't never been what you might call unpleasantness. Desire Miss Grantham to accord me the favour of a few words alone. I'm not sure Miss Deb is receiving visitors today. Take my message to her at once. No, don't bother. Did you want to see me, Mr Ravenscar? Perhaps we should go into the small drawing room. You have tricked me finely. Well, I suppose I did trick you a little. But it is not so very bad, after all. I thought I had been mistaken in you. By God, the only mistake I made was giving you credit for a little common sense. A drab from the stews would not have behaved as you have. You jade! It may not be a brilliant match for Adrian, but you will see how well it will answer. No, that I shall not. No power on earth will make me accept such a disgraceful misalliance. This is nothing but the stupidest prejudice. I warn you, if you value his regard for you, do not talk to Adrian in this vein. He will very likely call you out for refusing to acknowledge his wife. His wife? My God, his wife! Do not come browbeating me, Mr Ravenscar. As for the bills and the mortgage which you were so obliging as to send me, you shall be paid back every penny. Yes, by Mablethorpe. I thank you, ma'am. I want no payment of that kind. But if Mablethorpe had known the full story, do you think that he would have married you? What, do you? I am happy to see that you can still blush, ma'am. I had not thought it possible. And how did you know that I had married Mablethorpe? He told me so himself. I should have known better than to expect honest dealing from a wench out of a gaming house. You will be sorry you ever dared to speak to me in these terms. There is nothing I will not do to punish you. I disliked you the first time I met you. Now I have learned to detest you. And I thought I had learned to love you, ma'am. You do not understand the meaning of that word. But when you have squandered Adrian's fortune, you may reflect that had you played your cards more cleverly, you might have had my wealth to spend and my name to call your own. For myself... I count myself fortunate to have escaped so narrowly from the toils of a harpy. Marry you? I'd rather die. Don't dare to enter this house again. I wish I may never see you again as long as I live. You cannot wish it more heartily than I do. I wish your ill-gotten gains may choke you, you jade! No, what ails her? Oh, Raven's car has been here, and she says she has never been so insulted in her life. Oh. I have never known her so angry. She says she would like to boil him in oil. Ah, be oh. easy, ma'am. I give you my word. I have as pretty a revenge brewing for Raven's car as even Deb could wish. Oh, do anything you please. <laughs> Only go away. Hmm? <gasps> Mr. Ravenscar, your ladyship. Oh, Max. Have you heard what's happened? Yes, I know. I'm sorry, Aunt. Well, it's not your fault. I was ever so taken aback in my life. Well, it was my fault. I had the means to stop it, and I was fool enough not to use but them. Good heavens, Max, you never said a word to me about it. Do you tell me that you knew all along what they really meant to do? I, I don't understand. Surely we both knew. But I never heard of the girl's existence until today. Never heard of her existence. What in God's name are you talking about? I'm talking about this child Adrian says he's married. What are you talking about, pray? Child? Well, am I mad or are you... Adrian has married Deborah Grantham. He has not. He's married one of the Laxton girls. What? Then for heaven's sake, don't shout at me. Sorry. So you... you did not know either. He threw as much dust in your eyes as mine. When did Adrian meet Miss Laxton? How could he have married well, her? apparently he met her at Vauxhall Gardens with that dreadful woman, Deborah Grantham. The Laxtons were trying to force her into a marriage with James Filey, such a hateful man, if you had but known his mother. Well, what do they do but spirit the girl away to Lady Bellingham's house where she was kept hidden? Good God, she was in St James's Square all the time. Yes, falling in love with my son. Well, 
What could be more natural than for Adrian to tumble head over ears in love with a chit who was calling him her saviour and thinking him a perfect Sir Galahad? Now he's gone off to see Lord Laxton and talks of inserting a notice in the Times. My God, what have I done? You must excuse me, Aunt. I have pressing business to settle. Uh, good afternoon, Montage. Is Miss Crampton... No, good, sir. The order is I'm not to admit you, and that's all there is to it. Take my card up to Miss Grantham and tell her I must beg her to see me, if only for five minutes. It wouldn't do a mite of good if I did. She won't have you inside the house, and if I was to let you in, she'd very likely murder me. If you try to keep me from entering, it's not Miss Grantham who will murder you. If that's the way of it, put up your dabblers, Governor. With pleasure. I owed you that. Have the goodness to leave this house immediately. Miss Grantham, I must and will speak to you. I'm not interested. How dare you knock my servant down? If you won't walk into that room, I shall pick you up and carry you into it. Let me mill him down, Miss Depp. No, 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 go away. If you have anything to say to me, sir, say it and then go. I have come to beg your pardon. You need not have been to so much trouble. If I had not been crazy with jealousy, I should never have said what I did. I love you. I want to marry you. I can scarcely conceive of a worse fate. Forgive me. If you touch me again, I shall scream. I have met many men in my time who I thought odious, but none, believe me, none whom I hated as much as I hate you. I trust I make myself plain, sir. Yes, perfectly plain, ma'am. I will relieve you of the annoyance of my presence. Your very obedient servant. Oh! Oh! Oh, Deb! What on earth is the matter? I'm sorry I broke your vase, Aunt Lizzie. It was all Raven's car's fault. But now let us forget all about him and be comfortable again. Oh, Lucius Kennett has sent you a note. I, I meant to give it to you earlier. Thank you. arrive. Why was it not brought to me instantly? It was brought round last night, but you said you wouldn't see anyone. What does it say? I cannot tell you. Lucius has done something so dreadful. Oh, Aunt no. Lizzie, I must go out immediately. Pray tell, tell Silas to order the carriage. No, no, I'll take a hackney. I've not a moment to waste. Oh. Good morning, ma'am. I wish to see Mr. Raven's car immediately. Tell him it is most urgent. Very good, ma'am. If you'll be good enough to step into the library. Miss Grantham, good God, what is it? Have you seen your sister this morning? Uh, no, she's not up yet. She was out until the small hours at some ball or Mr. other. Mr. Raven's car, I have this instant received a letter from Mr. Kennett informing me that he has carried off your sister. Read it for yourself. Well, why have you brought me this, ma'am? Good God, do you not understand? Your sister has run off with him, believing that he means to marry her. I came because it was my fault. She met him with me at Vauxhall, and he is trying to punish you for my sake. But indeed, I never meant such wicked mischief as this. He won't hurt her. He is not as bad as that. He only means to hold her to ransom to get money out of you. But I know all the places where he may be found, and I know things about him that could ruin him. You must, you must let me help you now. Miss Grantham... My darling Deb, there's no need for you to distress yourself like this. Arabella is asleep upstairs. And if you don't believe me, I will take you up to see her with your own eyes. Are you sure? Perfectly sure. She told me all about your friend Lucius Kennett's little scheme last night. She told you? Well, I once advised her to beware of any man who tried to elope with her as he could only be a fortune hunter. It amused her to dupe Kennett into believing she meant to fly with him. But after he had waited at the rendezvous in the rain for an hour, a link boy put a note into his hands, which can have done nothing to heighten his self-esteem. Oh, thank God. Oh, dear. Mm. Oh, no, no. Oh, be quiet. Mm. But you cannot possibly marry me. You know you cannot. My beautiful idiot. Mm. Mm. But do consider what your family would say. I never consider what my family say. You, you cannot marry a wench out of a gaming house. I shall marry a wench out of a gaming house with as much pomp and ceremony as I can contrive. 
And you'll let me set up a fairy bank of my own. If I ever find you handling a pack of cards again, I'll make you sorry you were ever born, Jade. The part of Deborah Grantham was played by Sylvester Letuzel and Max Ravenscar by Nathaniel Parker. Lady Bellingham, Anna Massey, Lucius Cannot, Sean Barrett, Silas Wantage, Gavin Muir. Lord Ormskirk, Edward de Souza, Sir James Filey, Peter Yap, Lord Crewe, Jonathan Keeble. Lady Mablethorpe, Marcia Warren, Adrian, Lord Mablethorpe, Mark Payton, the Honourable Phoebe Laxton, Deborah Berlin. Kit Grantham, Oliver Senton, Arabella Ravenscar, Becky Hindley, Mrs. Patch, Tessa Worsley. Music by Trevor Allen Davis. Pharaoh's Daughter by Georgette Hare was dramatized by Kitty Black, directed by Jane Morgan, and produced by David Hitchinson. Radio 4, it's 20 past 9.